久しぶりに楽しい時間でしたでもそろそろ終わりにしましょう Knights of Azor 2, Bride of a New Moon, takes place in the fictional demon infested and ruined city of Yorun. I'm not quite sure how you say that, so I'll just put it on screen so you can see how it's actually spelled. <laughs> um, the story focuses on a knight named Alush and her two childhood friends, Liliana and Runehide. While escorting Liliana, Alush is ambushed and killed, only to later awaken as a half demon at the hands of New Courier. Uh, they're a religious organization with dark ties. Alush must now save Liliana and continue her journey, meeting new characters with their own mysterious pasts along the way. Sharing similar goals, she and the strange new allies set off to reveal the truth behind the shadows surrounding the world and become motivated to uncover the shocking truth behind the mysterious Queen of Moon. Knights of Azor 2 is, clearly, uh, the sequel to Knights of Azor. Only this time it's coming to Nint Nintendo Switch as well. So the copy I've reviewed is a PS4 version and I've been playing it on a PS4 Pro. All footage in the background is captured by myself at 1080p and locked to 30 frames per second um, <coughs> via an Ava Media capture card. And the game was also kindly supplied to me by Koi Tecmo. The game really opens up and starts once you re reach chapter 1. So that's when you got access to the hotel and you're granted missions to do. So the game is kind of timed uh, and you're against the clock in two different aspects. So first of all, there's the moon. So each day uh, you can go out and complete missions. But once you come back from whichever location you chose to visit, you must rest. And once you do that, the day ends and the moon gradually gets shadowed by the new moon. Um, obviously, if the moon gets totally surrounded, then it results in a game over. And you must either reload or restart the chapter. So you must ensure that all of the story missions are completed before that happens. Um, however, once you complete the story missions for that particular chapter, uh, the new moon is pushed back so you get more time in the next chapter. What I found best was to complete the story missions up until the last part of that story mission for each chapter and then doing the side missions until there was just one um, moon um, phase left and then on that uh, particular one do the last story mission that way you're using your time more effectively and um, I'll get into the time later on though because it is a major part of the game so the second timed aspect is the time aspect on the field in the different areas where you go out and do your missions so at first you can only spend up to 10 minutes at a time at a chosen area uh, the timer is increased via upgrades and leveling up your character later on though. Uh, however, at first it does appear to be a bit unfair because you can't get much done within 10 minutes. Uh, but over time it does get a lot easier, trust me. Like, at, at one point I was at like, I think it's 18 and a half minutes uh, per level. And I was leaving the level with like 8 or 9 minutes still left because I had nothing else left to do. Um, whilst you're out completing the missions, uh, you'll find creatures called servants who, once you've saved them, uh, will join your team and can be picked uh, up to a maximum of two at a time uh, before heading back out to different areas. So the creatures offer two of three different things. So all of them will appear alongside you, kind of like Pokemon, and fight the enemies at will um, while you're out doing the missions. Then some of them will either offer a special attack so like a fire breath or a freeze blast, uh, blast that will attack the enemies when you press 
uh, for a relative shoulder button. Or um, some of the others will turn into weapons. So there's some that when you press the shoulder button relates to that particular creature will become a bigger sword that uh, takes over your weapon or it will become like a big axe or a big hammer. Um, so it's up to you. You can either have them as uh, spells or you can have them as new weapons. Personally, I just kept them as um, the magic spells and kept my weapon as the main sword, the one-handed sword, because it was slicing through everyone with no problem anyway. But I, I do understand that some of the other weapons are a bit slower but a bit more powerful. But it's not really my thing to do that. I couldn't be bothered. Uh, the creatures also uh, can be used to overcome obstacles. So again, a bit like Pokemon, um, you can use certain... Um, creatures to burn down bushes or like drain the electrical fields all you need to do is um, have them equipped so if you go into a level in the big bush that you can't get through as long as you've got the fire one with you you can burn that bush down uh, the good thing is though is once you've burnt that down for example if you come back to that level again later on with different creatures to overcome different obstacles that bush that you burnt down will remain burnt down so you don't have to keep taking the same ones over and over again. You can just do a couple of um, sweeps of that level with the different uh, creatures and get rid of all of the electric fields, the, the ice screens, the, um, the bushes, um, the jumps that you can't get over. So there's, there's uh, lots of uh, reasons to um, replay the same level with the different creatures, basically. So as you're out, you'll meet different characters and you'll be able to obtain them as a member of your team um, and once you've done that you'll be able to take them out on missions with you so they all have their own weapons you can't change them though um, which is a bit of a shame they're stuck with what they have and um, but you can change their accessories so you can basically give them stuff to make them stronger or make them get more gold for you stuff like that um, and you can change their clothes so they have their standard uniform the only other clothes i've unlocked at a moment is the swimming clothes so so in my playthrough, for example, uh, a few of the women were out fighting monsters wearing nothing but a bikini. So it's it not going to offer much protection, but it gave me the option to do that. So why not? <laughs> um, they all have three special attacks as well, which are very different. So there's a strong double attack uh, that you build up by both you and the other character hitting the enemies at the same time to get a double hit. Um, that can be quite hard to pull off sometimes, but if you do it a couple of times, it will unlock a move where it says press circle. Uh, you press that and both your characters will go back to back or side by side and you just keep bashing the circle button. This will unleash a powerful double attack against um, either one enemy or multiple enemies. Um, there's another attack as well where you hold L1 and circle to do an area of effect attack. So like a big circle appears on the screen, you let go of a button and it will attack ev everyone that's within that particular area. Um, this particular attack seems to regen over time. I'm not quite sure what the time is, but it does regen itself. So you just keep using it whenever it pops back up again. And they also have another special attack where you press triangle and circle at the same time when that pops up. Uh, I think that might also be another one where it's timed, where it just pops back up again after a certain time. Um, that one can be anything from a support to an attack where the other character will just attack whoever's in front of them uh, on their own. Um, but yeah, there's three different moves that change. It doesn't change it drastically, but it does change kind of the gameplay style because you have the option to attack slightly different and do different moves against different enemies um, so it, it, it does help out and it, it, if you know what an enemy is weak against then you can always take out the person who has an attack that they're weak against so the way I see it um, Knights of Azor uh, 2 has four main aspects to its gameplay mechanics so I'll go through those now uh, so first of all I'm going to say is the main story quests. So, as you progress through the story, you're given quests which relate to this main story, obviously. Um, so these are usually broke down in three to five parts. Some of them you can technically do all in one go. You can just go to an area and do pretty much the whole story in, in the 10, 15 minutes that you've got. Uh, however, I don't advise that you do that because if you do, you'll miss out on the other progressions which 
I'll mention in a minute for you. Um, there's seven different areas as well that you can travel to. So a new one is opened up every time you get to a new chapter. So seven chapters, seven areas. Uh, the main quests vary from investigate an area to progress deeper into the area until you reach the boss. So there's not a massive difference between the chapters uh, in terms of like the big style of missions that you do. But the narrative and the characters that you meet in each chapter keeps the gameplay and story fresh and interesting. So even though you're doing a lot of the same thing, it doesn't feel boring or monotonous because you are dealing with a different part of the story. So you don't always realise that you are just pretty much doing the same thing over and over again. So the second um, aspect that I put down as is the side missions. So the side missions are small requests that are only present during that chapter that they appear in. So for example, once you open up the mine level, uh, one of the missions is to kill a certain number of uh, the new enemy that you're about to encounter in the mine. Uh, if you don't complete that side mission by the time that you complete the chapter, uh, it will go down as an automatic fail. So if you're going towards platinum or the trophy for getting all of the... Um, all of the side, all of the missions completed. You have to make sure that you manage your time um, good enough, so that you don't miss out on any of these uh, missions. The good thing is, though, you can miss a match. So, say there was a side mission in the mines, and there's a main story in the mines. Then, if you go to the mines and you complete both of those while you're there, it will knock them both off the list for you. It's not a case of you only go there and do one thing then you get kicked out. You can just go there, do as much as you want in your time period and then come back to the hotel. So that, that's a good, good feature as well. The third one I've got down is social missions. So these kind of missions open up information about each of the characters and their backgrounds as well as allowing you to create a bond with each of the characters. So similar to the, the side missions basically. So uh, kill X amount of enemies, go to a certain place to meet someone, collect a certain amount of items and stuff like that. But the difference is, is once you complete these, you'll either get a cutscene uh, with the character who it was off um, to get to know them a bit more or get to know their background or they'll open up a, an affinity mission. Um, those missions are very similar again. It's a case of um, it would be like a blue icon this time around and it will say take me to the drawbridge in the city um, because I need to meet a friend and you go along there with them, you do a little mission. But the difference is, is that when you do the blue ones, the affinity ones, it will increase your bond. I think it's uh, six little flowers that are closed on each person um, in their status screen. And as you complete those particular missions, one of those flowers opens and it gives that character something like a permanent boost, like a permanent higher experience bonus or stronger attacks, stuff like that. So again, as well, if you're going for trophies, that's something that's uh, that you have to do, but you probably won't get that in one playthrough. You'll probably have to do multiple, but again, I'll come to that in a minute. And the final aspect that I put down is the character and beast progression. So when you complete certain missions, um, so usually the side missions or main missions, and also the silver social missions, so not the affinity ones, uh, you get be um, points for your creature, which can be used to upgrade um, whichever creature you want, basically. So at first you can only upgrade your creatures up to, I think it's level 30, but once you've got one of them up to that level, you resurrect them. So you basically kill the creature and then bring it back to level one. Um, but it's got higher base stats. So then as you start leveling it up again, it will get more and more level, uh, more and more stats. And then you kill it off and bring it back again at level one where it's higher again. Then you can keep rebuilding it. I think I'm on third prestige on my fire um, creature. Um, which can now be leveled up to level 80 before you can kill it off and re bring it back again. Um, so yeah, it's, a, it's just a way of making your creatures a lot more powerful than that. It's not essential, but it's, it's nice to know you can do that. Um, and again, going back to Pokemon, um, you can get evolution stones in this game um, later on in the game. If you use that on one of the creatures, it will change the way the creature looks and the stats will increase uh, significantly as well. So you can find those in the chests and you can change the creatures into totally different ones. Not totally different, but 
different colour palette, basically. Um, which is really good, it makes them a lot stronger, so I've used a couple of those as well. Also, in terms of progression, um, you obtain blood by killing the enemies um, in the various different areas that you go to. Uh, blood is used to upgrade your character, because you're kind of like a half-demon, half-human vampire woman. So, um, once you've got enough blood, you go into the um, upgrade chamber, and it will ding you to the new level. And once you do that, you get action points. So the action points can be used to purchase permanent boosts for yourself. So similar to the uh, ones uh, for the char uh, other characters, um, you can get stuff like increase your attack, um, increase the amount of uh, money that you get while you're out there, um, increase like how strong a certain weapon is. So stuff like that. I'll show you the um, the tree in the background while I'm talking about this, but Basically, the more blood you get, the higher the level you can go, and the more things you can unlock. So, personally, I loved the soundtrack with this game. It fitted really well with the environment, and the action that was taking place it never felt like it was intruding on vocals or sound effects. I I've played some other games where, a bit like Prey when it first came out, where you would walk in and start attacking the bad guy and then suddenly the music's like duh, 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 duh. <laughs> it just drowns out anything else that's happening uh, this game's not like that the music stays strong and present but it doesn't get him away of the soundtrack and the vocal uh, sorry the sound effects and the vocals uh, but in terms of the vocals as well this is where it might put some people off um the game is all in japanese voices with english subtitles so no english voices in this one again um, personally though, I prefer to play with English voices, um, but developers like Koi Tecmo, uh, they won't provide them on games which are going to end up being a uh, niche, to be honest with you, because the amount of cost and time it would take to get all of this game redone in English it wouldn't be worth it, to be honest with you. Um, however, the good thing is, is it's not like uh, the Warrior style games where when you're in the middle of a mission, they'll start talking Japanese and you have to look around on the screen for the bots with the English in it uh, because they're delivering important information. In this game, when you're in the battle and one of the other characters talks to you, all it is, little pop up in the corner, it will just be someone saying like, good job, or we can do it, something like that. They're cheering you on for encouragement. There's no... There's no... Um, critical information being given in Japanese so you know it's all good it all works fine and the voice acting by the Japanese voice artists is great as well uh, graphically uh, the visual style is great it obviously looks uh, a lot like the original game but um, more enhanced because um, that game's about two three years old now uh, I played it on the PS4 Pro. Uh, I absolutely loved the quality. Um, I don't think there's many PS4 Pro enhancements, um, if anyone's going to ask. Um, it doesn't look like the resolution's any higher than 1080p, to be honest with you. Um, it might be if you have a 4K screen, but I already have a 1080p TV and it did look like 1080p. It didn't look like it was being downsampled. Um, but it ran really smooth and it was so solid. So I think the PS4 Pro enhancement is going to be performance and the extra visual effects on the screen. Um, this footage is capped at 30 FPS because of my capture card. Um, in game it was a lot smoother than what you're seeing right now. So I, I think the cap might be, it's either uncapped frame rate or it's a 60 FPS like their recent games have been on the PS4 Pro. Um, it's just so smooth. It, it runs perfect. No bugs, no glitches, no resets, no crashes. Nothing like that has happened. Which, for a new game with no patches, <coughs> you you just don't see that anymore. <laughs> so, overall, um, yeah, I, I would say I, I pretty much love this game, to be honest with you. I've been playing it for just over three days and I pretty much couldn't stop playing it as soon as I started um, started playing it. Even though I have got loads of other reviews to do and I just got a PSVR last Friday and I've got about four games to review on that as well. Um, I just couldn't stop playing this game. I've played about, about 35, 36 hours so far. Um, I completed it this morning um, on Tuesday. 
and I'm just started my second playthrough, uh, so I'm going to get a couple of hours of that done tonight before I move on to my next game, because uh, I am trying to aim for the platinum. The only negative thing that I can say really is that some people may get bored of the combat, as to be honest with you, even though you have got a lot of different creatures that you can take in, so you can change your weapon round, change your magic, and you've got all the different allies with their different attacks and that, the combat doesn't change that much to make it different, so you do feel like you're doing the same thing over and over again, especially with the quests that are very similar. So, I don't know. I, I'm a massive fan of Dynasty Warriors and those kind of games and any Koi Tecmo game. So, I'm used to monotonous tasks and I, I enjoy it. I enjoy doing collector fonds and going out and doing stuff like that. So, if you're that kind of person, then you're probably going to love it like I did. But if Dynasty Warriors and that bores you, then you may not get as much enjoyment out of this game as I did. Um, one other thing as well to be aware of is if you are going for a Platinum, um, expect a couple of playthroughs. So I read today that someone said that they think it's about a free pl uh, playthrough minimum, because that's where it is on the Japanese side. Because um, once you complete the game and you get a new game plus... Um, certain things are moved over and you can now, like, you can't skip them but you can speed up the cutscenes in the second gameplay um, it, I reckon it will still take about 10-15 hours to do a playthrough, even with that um, I don't want to obviously spoil it and say like what gets carried over and what doesn't and stuff like that but it doesn't carry over everything to allow you to just carry on from a point where you are you have to start a lot of things again from scratch um, so yeah, so doing the new game plus is basically going to take about 10-15 hours I reckon. I'll, I'll know more exact number once I finish my second playthrough basically. <laughs> In terms of score, because um, people like scores, because um, I've not got anything really snuck it down on. To me, this would be about a 9 to 9.5 out of 10. Um, again, no massive Koi Tecmo fan here. Um, I play literally every Warrior spin-off game for around about 200 hours each every time a new one comes out. So take from my score what you will. <laughs> I enjoyed the game. And I, if you enjoyed the first one, or if you enjoy other Gust games like the Atelier games, you'll probably love this game as well. Um, well, I said, gameplay footage I've been playing in the background all the time here. Uh, I've also got a video going up at the same time as this video, uh, which is the first hour of the game with no commentary. So if you just want to look at it and see how it works, it has the full prologue and a little bit of chapter one in that. So it's about an hour and ten minutes long. Um, I urge you to go and watch that if you want a more in-depth look as to how the game plays. Because... It, it evolves more from what's in that video, but it is a lot of the same kind of thing. So if you like what you see in that video, perfect. Go and buy it. Be great. If you've not played the first game and you don't know what the story is about in that, go and buy the first game. You can get it cheap now um, on PC and PS4. The game is out today um, in the North American region on PS4 and the Nintendo Switch. And it's out here in the UK and Europe on the 27th, um, which is Friday, I believe, on the same devices, PS4 and the Switch. Um, but I also think it's out worldwide today on the PC via Steam, because Steam doesn't seem to like split up Europe and America, so I think it's out today. Um, this is pretty much my second uh, review that I've done so far, so if you like the review, please leave a like, it will help me out a lot. Um, if you have any comments, leave them down below. If you've got any questions about the game, uh, like I said, I've completed it from beginning to end, and I'm on my second playthrough now. Uh, leave any comments or questions down below, and I'll answer them as soon as they come through, or as soon as I see them. Um, and uh, if you have any comments about the video, or anything that you, you think I could change um let me know um like, and like i always say um i'm gonna start trying to use this um, channel a lot more i've got more things to stream i've got a psvr now i've got a lot of vr games to try out um i've got a lot of other games that are still under embargo um to put out um i might start a playthrough on 
uh, a horror game that I got last night um, that I did a quick 20 minute video on. Also, um, I'm going to have a full written review for uh, Knights of Azor 2 and also all my other written reviews are all over on Square XO. Um, I'll leave the information in the description below. Um, but yeah, all my reviews will be over there. So the Knights of Azor 2 one will either be up tomorrow or on Thursday or Friday, uh, depending on how soon I can get this review uh, up, because obviously I'm trying to do the video first. Um, but yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.